This is my 1997 Honda Civic Type R replica. It's got the B16B engine in it from the Civic Type R and it revs out to 9,000 RPM. It's a ton of fun. I've owned it for almost a year now and we've gone all across the continent with it down to Key West, Florida and all the way up to Nova Scotia, Canada. Had a ton of fun with it. It's not a fast car. Um, it's definitely a slower car, but it's a lot of fun. I've also taken it to a bunch of racetracks, such as Gingerman Raceway in Michigan, Toronto Motorsports Park in Canada, and most recently where I took this to Virginia International Raceway and competed against my friend with his Integra Type R swapped Honda Civic as well. If you haven't seen the video, check it out. Everybody's been telling me that I need to K-swap this Civic and that I'd have a lot more fun with it with more power. Now I realize that's gonna make it a little bit less fun to drive on the street, but I'm okay with that. I've enjoyed it for a year and it's time to move on to something different. So we're gonna nearly double the power of this car by putting in a K24 into it with the K20 head. And with the help of K-Tune, we're gonna have a ton of bolt-on parts onto this car, hopefully making near 260 wheel horsepower. We've got big plans ahead of us for this little Honda, and it all starts right now. The first step to any engine swap is obviously to remove the old motor. This is bittersweet for me because I absolutely love this B16B. It's a fantastic motor. There's not many engines out there that have this smooth of a power band and rev out to 9,000 RPM. The B16B is such an iconic motor and it's a very popular setup for good reason. People say Hondas are easier to work on and that might be true if you know what you're doing. You know, it's like, I think any car that you know how to work on is gonna be easier than cars that you don't know how to work on. I've done a little bit of work on this before the road trip. So I know a little bit the basics, but I don't know all the little stuff like most, you know, Honda guys do. So I'm sure it'd be a lot easier if I knew all the little stuff. Despite not working on Hondas very much, it's actually quite easy to take apart. There's a good reason that Honda has the reputation that it has of being easy to work on. Everything was going very smoothly. That was until I got to the shifter pin known as the pin. So I'm working on uh, this pin here on the shift linkage uh, that is known as the pin. And uh, it's aptly named because it's not budging. You're supposed to hammer it and I'm hammering it but it's, it's, you're going against gravity. So it's hard to actually give it some oomph. I, I've hit this thing probably a hundred times and I, I haven't seen it move at all. Of course it's hardened steel. Adequately named. Well, that didn't take you long other than that one pin on the shift linkage, but we're ready to pull the motor out. Let's go ahead and pull it out. Well, that honestly wasn't that bad. That only took a, a couple of hours. Not as fast as I can pull an Escort motor, but pretty good considering I've never pulled a, a B-Series out of a Civic before, and it wasn't that bad. So um, it's kind of sad to see this engine go because I absolutely love this motor. So if you're thinking about doing a B-Series swap on your Civic, do it. Definitely, like you don't have to spend all the money on a K-Swap. Um, but I'm gonna see how the K-Swap is. So it's supposed to be better. I, I, it's hard to believe that you can have a better engine than this thing because I absolutely love it. But uh, it's time to move on. Vroom, vroom. <laughs> you don't have sixth, big guy. <laughs> I will. Oh my gosh. So I have loaded the B16B into the back of my truck and I'm going to JSpec Auto, um, which is in Richmond. It's about two hours away from where I am. And then uh, I'm also going to pick up my K24 from them. They have a really good, very low mileage, good condition K24A2. Um, technically, since it's JDM, it's like just a K24A, but it is a 2008 TSX motor. Um, so it's got all the good bells and whistles on it to make the most amount of power possible, and the most amount of torque possible, and it's in the best condition possible. That right there is my new engine. I want it. So what is this motor? Why are we getting this one? All right, this is the motor we decided to go with for the swap. It's an 06 K24A with the RBB2 head. We can tell this one in particular has been like pretty well maintained. 
it's got some nice features to look at like the Honda oil filter. This was an automatic transmission model. So we know the automatic ones were beat on a little less because the previous owner likely wasn't out there banging gears in Japan. Typical with other JDM motors that we get, this one has pretty low miles, around 60,000. And you know, all these motors are pulled out of running cars and we back them with a 90 day warranty. Sweet. So, and it looks pretty clean too. Like just looking from the outside, the aluminum looks very shiny. Uh, we checked in here, it is the three lobe, which is apparently different than the two lobe, I guess? Yeah, the three lobe ones, we call them real VTEC. The two lobe ones, the Honda community knows it as fake VTEC. <laughs> But uh, this one has the three lobe cams, the bigger valves, so it should be a great contender for what Ben is planning to do with this. Sweet. So this is, this is definitely the best way to make the most NA power possible out of uh, a stock block uh, K24. So I am yeah. going to put a K20 head on it. Okay. Even though this is a great head. Oh no, I mean K-series, you know, you can go to the moon with the power on those setups. So definitely excited to see what you do with this one. Yeah, I'm shooting for 260. Okay. 260 that's wheel a, horse. That's a good number. Yeah. <laughs> All of these AC components I need to remove from the engine bay so I can fit a full-size radiator up there in the front and obviously that's a different compressor than what I would use on the K-Swap so all of that has to come out. Dumb little me forgot to drain the AC system of its Freon before I pulled the motor which means I can't drive the car to a shop and drain it so I had to tow it to a shop and have them drain it out of the trailer. Lesson learned drain the Freon before you start working on the car. finally removed the Freon out of the AC system, we can properly remove the compressor, condenser, and all the AC lines out of the engine bay to uh, give us some more room to clean up the engine bay in preparation for paint. Let's get started. gotten everything out of this engine bay and uh, it looks all very good bare bones I mean there's nothing in here I did leave the brake lines here because I didn't want to open up the system and let all of that air in and just make it be a big mess especially when I can just pull it away um, so I'm gonna cover that wrap that with some tape and I uh, should be good to go there these radiator mounts right here um, need to be drilled out one of these here is for the radiator and one of them is for the AC condenser um, I'm going with a full-size radiator for obvious reasons since I'll be on track So I'm gonna need to get rid of all four of these and put in my own brackets that came with a K-Tune full-size radiator kit Should still be able to fit an Integra uh, AC condenser in front of the radiator So I should still be able to have best of both worlds But uh, yes before I paint this engine bay I want to remove these because otherwise there'd be spots underneath each one of these that's unpainted and that wouldn't look very good. So I'm gonna remove those so that we can fit the full size radiator in here. So I have to drill those out first. And then once I do that, I can get to cleaning, degreasing and sanding the engine bay to be ready for some paint. This engine bay is absolutely filthy. It's obvious that it was never cleaned since 1997. So we need to get all of the dirt and grime off of the surface of this paint so the new paint will adhere to it. Painting is all in the prep work. So it's important to take your time. This might seem like an easy task, but what this time lapse doesn't show is just how long it actually took. Just degreasing the engine bay took several hours, and by the time I had gotten to sanding the engine bay, my arms were so tired I had to call in my fiance for extra help. We start with a coarse grit, working our way softer until we get to around 400 to 600 grit. This is the optimal roughness for paint to stick to without seeing the sanding marks underneath. Speaking of the paint, I'm doing a rattle can paint job. I'm not a professional and this is definitely not the best way to do this, but it's the best way that I'm capable of and it should meet up to the quality standards that I have for this car. Well, I hope that time lapse was fairly interesting. Um, I've spent about four days painting this engine bay now, 
Uh, I'm glad I took the time into doing this because it looks fantastic. I'm ready for the final step, which is laying down the clear coat. All right, well, I have successfully completed the painting aspect of this. I uh, got the engine bay totally painted and it looks, it looks pretty good. Um, I've still got it all taped off here, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tape now so we can actually get a better look at everything here. But uh, I'm pretty shocked at how it's turned out. It, uh, it's got a nice gloss to it. It's, uh, it's very clean. Really, it looks, it looks just like OEM. Uh, so I'm very, very happy uh, with how well it has turned out. Um, the firewall looks great. Everything looks great. So now it's time to remove all of the tape from the engine bay and uh, actually start putting things back in it. is cured, it's now time to start reassembling the engine bay. I thought about putting the old parts back in for just about three seconds before I replaced everything with new parts as much as I could. I even bought $200 worth of brand new stainless steel hardware, just so I didn't have to wrestle any rusty bolts in the future. I used a higher grade steel bolt for the structural components and these stainless steel bolts for everything else in between. And for the parts that didn't need replacing, I made sure to clean them up and paint them to keep everything looking brand new. So this is the old subframe. Uh, this is the EK subframe. You're looking at it backwards from the engine bay. It would be more like that. Uh, but this is what I've removed from the car and you'll notice how how fat it is throughout this this center section right here um, That's why I'm gonna be putting this subframe in which this is from an Integra um, I believe it's the same as an EG. You'll notice how much thinner the subframe is It still has a lot of rigidity, um, but they put the steering rack on top of it rather than inside of it um, So basically what that does is it gives you two more inches of room in the engine bay So that way basically the K will sit back further in the engine bay distribute the weight a little bit better all in all, just give me more room in the engine bay to get stuff done and uh, to be able to work on it and put parts in it and clear a full-size radiator and that sort of thing. So we're gonna go ahead and put this subframe in now. All right, well, we've got the Civic on the ground for the first time in like a week or two. Uh, everything suspension-wise, is together it's just a roller at this point so we can roll it onto the trailer to get this bad boy up to wisconsin i'm going to take this up to wisconsin to actually get the motor and trans and all the case swap stuff put in so you're gonna to have to stay tuned for that in the next episode i'm gonna cut this one off here um, i hope you've enjoyed everything that you've watched so far the next episode will come out fairly shortly after this um, it's not going to be months like it is for the escort build or other builds like that um, this build is getting knocked out um, and actually it should, in theory, be done in one week from now um, up in Wisconsin under the masterful craft of Andy Smedegard. Um, he's going to be putting basically the case swap and everything related to it into this car. Uh, but until then, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for next episode.